Debbie, almost a hurricane, dangerous winds and storm surge piling into western Florida on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 5th. The main story is Tropical Storm Debbie, which is still at 65 miles per hour. Recon are entering the storm right now, uh, so they'll have some new info by the time this bulletin comes out. Uh, it may well be stronger, it certainly looks stronger on satellite and radar imagery. So slightly unhappy timing there that we don't actually know what the readings are at the time of broadcast. But it's day 66 of hurricane season and Debbie is getting closer to its landfall in the Big Bend region of Florida. We expect the landfall will be somewhere north of Cedar Key. Another area of interest to its south as well, 20% chance for the Central American region, possibly the Yucatan. Carlotta and Daniel there, tropical storms, Carlotta weakening, Daniel maintaining, Tropical Depression 5E has also formed and another area of interest behind it, looking even better now, so probably higher than 60%. And in the Western Pacific, a 40% area of interest that we've marked, a system that could end up becoming a tropical cyclone near the Agasawara Islands of Japan or off the eastern coast of Honshu even over the next five days. And in the North Indian Ocean, there's not too much going on here, but there is still a disturbance over the central part of India inland. And there is more disturbed weather off over the Bay of Bengal region, but nothing that we can really call a tropical cyclone. Southwest Indian Ocean continues to look rather quiet. No surprise there, of course, it is in the middle of the off-season period, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere in the winter months at this point. So the big story of course is Debbie, a high-end tropical storm at this point. It is 118 kilometers from Ancloak Key, 125 from Clearwater, 150 from Cedar Key, 237 from Gainesville and 336 from Jacksonville. Hurricane warnings in effect for that region of Florida and a storm surge warning in effect as well. Tropical storm warnings for large areas there, including the eastern coast now as well, up to the Savannah River, and a storm surge watch still for Bonita Beach to Longboat Key. Storm surge has been occurring in some areas, as we saw on our live stream earlier this evening. Well, this is the latest satellite imagery, and you can see that the storm is still heading in a general northerly movement, although there is a slight eastward component in there. Latest uh, radar and satellite imagery showing that it looks like there is an eye forming underneath all of that. At the moment, there's just been one brief uh, blow up there of convection once again. Here's the Eastern Pacific and all of its activity there. There's Carlotta at the top, Daniel at the bottom left, 5E at the bottom right. So tons going on here, notably Carlotta losing most of its cloud tops, it has to be said, leaving only the low and perhaps part of the mid uh, region of its clouds. Here's mesoscale rapid scan of Debbie off, of course, to the right there. Uh, you can't see the full picture, but the western side is much quieter than the eastern side, and that's been the case for quite a while. The storm force winds extend out 120 nautical miles off to its eastern sides. However, in the southwestern quadrant, there still haven't been any tropical storm force winds sampled yet, not by recon or by satellite estimates. Well, that may be about to change with recon getting in there, and it does look like it's swirling around a little bit better towards that southwest side. Here's Carlotta, its progress in the last uh, few hours there, and it is a downward trend. You can clearly see they're looking worse and worse as the time period goes by, losing those cloud tops uh, by the hour and Carlotta is on its way out. There's Daniel as well looking very disorganized, really messy, not too much else I can say about that. I'm still a little bit uh, doubtful as to whether it actually has been a tropical storm at all, but there it is, they're expecting a brief 45 mile per hour peak. This, I think, is, yes, it's 5E, the other tropical depression that's now formed and likely to become a tropical storm very soon. National Hurricane Center, along with one or two model runs, suggests that it will be completely absorbed into the other system off to its east, uh, which will become a tropical storm. 
and this is 91W which is very close to Daitojima in Japan blowing up some decent amounts of convection there as well looking quite good there this is 92W a uh, circulation there a little bit spinny thing uh, low pressure and this is 93W which is another system just off 91W very close to Okinawa really messy stuff and now 94W which is near the Agasawara Islands of Japan there's tons going on there in the Western Pacific but they all look as messy as the last one uh, and there's that last one there with cloud tops blowing up that's I think the one that we're given that 40% chance and this is the other East Pack Invest that one that may end up swallowing up 5E starting to look good as well getting decent rotation that could well become a tropical cyclone as well overnight tonight here's a look at the Atlantic off the coast of the United States and of course stemming from uh, Debbie there's a big front that's being pulled up there uh, throwing lots of clouds and that is pulling Debbie with it uh, there's also that disturbance that's just about to enter the Caribbean Sea there you can see it blowing up a few clouds and thunderstorms entering through the Lesser Antilles and this is the Eastern Atlantic off the coast of Africa there's not too much going on here at this point a few thunderstorms but really it's very transient here's the Eastern Pacific all of those well two of the systems visible there 5E on the left and the other one behind it is catching up they will merge the other two systems Daniel and Carlotta they're going to tangle in with each other as well here we're going to have a double Fujiwara effect in the eastern pacific here's the west pack where there's just tons of other stuff going on but it's all just little niggly things really uh, lots of little cloud tops blowing up from those invests but they're very small scale Here's the Indochina region and the Bay of Bengal, some monsoonal showers. There's the west coast of India um, where we've still got that disturbance there. This isn't animated for some reason, but gives you still a little idea. Very busy times. Well, in the eastern Pacific, sea surface temperatures still look great off the coast of Mexico, over 30 degrees Celsius for those two eastern systems. For the western ones, temperatures not looking so good. Carlotta dealing with that right now. For Debbie, those temperatures are sky high, 32 degrees, possibly slightly higher in one or two spots. And those sea surface temperatures are pushing inland now, washing ashore with that storm surge. Uh, in the western Pacific, we've still got those very high temperatures as well over a very large area from the central Philippines straight through to the Ryukyu Islands and off Kyushu in Japan as well, where temperatures are pushing 32 degrees. In the North Indian Ocean, temperatures look quite good there as well, Bay of Bengal being the hot spot there off the coast of West Bengal, 29 degrees. Compared to average, the Atlantic is still very much above what is considered normal, around 3 degrees above average in the main development region and in that small spot in the northeastern gulf, which of course is where Debbie is going. Subtropics extremely hot. Eastern Pacific, a few hot spots there as well, 3 degrees above average. Western Pacific, generally above average there too, around the Philippines, 2 degrees above. And near Japan, very much above there, 3 to 4, maybe even one or two spots, 5 degrees above average. Oceanic heat content looks like this. Uh, still quite a lot going on in the Western Pacific, although science is actually waning a little bit from that big red plume. Eastern Pacific, not too much going on there, but there are still a few areas off the coast of Mexico that are still providing some energy. For the Atlantic, well, maybe it's a reason why Debbie hasn't strengthened more rapidly. There isn't very much oceanic heat content where it is, uh, and neither has it been helped by the western side being very short, uh, because if it had a little bit further over there, uh, there's a lot more oceanic heat content over the Gulf. Computer models then, the GFS calling for landfall. At the moment, it looks like we're going to get landfall sometime uh, at around... 11 a.m. I think is going to be generally the time, but it could still change quite a bit. It could be anywhere from around 7 a.m. Uh, through to around uh, 2 or 3 p.m., depending on what happens. Then the storm moves inland, it moves off over the open Atlantic again, and it does a U-turn according to the GFS model back into Georgia, actually, which of course is not what the National Hurricane Center is saying. They'll take it further northeastwards through the Carolinas. Here's the Eastern Pacific with those two double Fujiwara effects going on there with those four systems eventually becoming two systems and then one system as that one tropical storm is the last one standing by the end of that five-day period and which one is it well it is 
about to be found out there. It looks like 5e actually comes out on top there. It's really going to be a uh, interesting um, little tussle. Now here's the Western Pacific in that period as well. We finally have this system forming near the Agasawara Island chain and eventually may consolidate into a tropical cyclone as it passes quite close to Tokyo off the east coast of Honshu. Watch that again as this system eventually develops from a very broad low pressure system at first, uh, non-tropical possibly at first there, uh, and eventually it starts to spin up better and becomes that tropical cyclone off the coast of Japan. Looking at rainfall expectations for the southeastern United States, of course it has been well publicized now that it is going to be a big rainmaker regardless of what the wind and surge does. We are looking at now some very high rainfall amounts over northern Florida and southern Georgia and secondary areas in parts of uh, the Carolinas as well. Look at that, potentially 28 inches of rain near Tallahassee. That is getting up towards uh, 700 millimeters there. 14 inches in parts of South Carolina and 12 inches in parts of North Carolina as well. Looking to the longer range and what's left of uh, Debbie hanging around for quite a bit there too. Another system moving into the Gulf of Mexico, that may, may be the one that we've tagged. Actually quite weak on this particular run which is good news, eventually makes landfall near the Rio Grande. And uh, that system in the Eastern Pacific 5E moving off shot there towards the left hand side, nothing else forming behind it. Looks like Eastern Pacific may have another quiet phase. In the Western Pacific, that storm continues off the east coast of Japan, then pulls away a little bit, definitely turns post-tropical a little while later. Then there's another system, an enormous system that tries to get some kind of thing going, maybe a brief tropical cyclone near the coast of China. Very difficult to spot there with this big gyric low pressure system, uh, making for a very messy situation in the Westpac. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request at any time. And are still waiting for Hone t-shirts still available as well because Hone certainly isn't available yet. That's the next name in the, in the Central Pacific. In the Silly Range, well, let's take a look at what else happens over there in the Western Pacific. There's nothing else to look at, actually, in the Silly Range, day 10 to 16. There's another little system there that tries to develop and actually does so towards the end of that loop. Uh, it's just a small tropical storm, really. Uh, so apart from uh, Debbie, it really doesn't look like there's any real hurricane or typhoon force threats out there across the Northern Hemisphere over that 16-day period. So interesting that we are still at some kind of quiet for this time of year. Of course, it is the start of August and things could ramp up very quickly. Well, August 5th, 1965 had a completely different scenario and an extremely powerful storm. It was Typhoon Jean about to make landfall in Kyushu and it was peaking as a Category 5 all the way up there within 18 hours of making landfall in Kyushu, which I think it still did as a high-end Category 4. Of course, it weakened very quickly after that, after it made landfall. There is a damaged photo from Japan when Typhoon Jean roared through the islands. Well, back to today, we are definitely code red for Debbie. Uh, and it is a hurricane landfall that we are expecting. The next name is Ernesto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Amelia. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Maria. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Asna. 30 storms so far in 2024. The average is 92, or quite a bit behind what we would expect at this point. 2020, for a give you a little example there, had 41 by this point. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean is Ansha, and in the South Pacific, it is Pitta. We'll be back again with another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night. Become an ultimate fan today.